earlier session we have tried to understand the reason why the festivals of india have been a huge success and a celebrated moment in whichever country it was organized in dear learners and students welcome to this session in this session we will take one step forward and try to understand one of the most successful events right from its inception to the current status so we'll start with the case studies of the first festival of india which was organized in united kingdom followed by the festival at united states which actually gave shape and strength to the future of the event and of course the festival at switzerland which was organized as early as 2018 just to show the continuity right from 1947 to 2018 all the case studies have been supported with the help of diagrams and pictures which i'm sure will make the showcasing more exciting for the learners and also as a support system for the various cases that have been taken up and finally we will sum up the session one by one we will take up the festivals of india organized abroad through the case of the united kingdom festival followed by the festival held at usa and of course the festival that was organized in switzerland so beginning with the first festival that was organized in united kingdom in the first ever exhibition of independent india which was held in britain the burlington house london when indian antiquities were exhibited for the public as i have discussed in the earlier session This effort was the first of its kind where post independence India organized an independent self portrayal of its antiquities in front of the public that was in the United Kingdom it was in fact the british government that had proposed to hold an exhibition of indian classical art once again in 1978 as a continuity to the first exhibition that was organized in 1947-48 so after a gap of 30 years once again the event was taken up the prime minister of india mrs indira gandhi altered the event to display our past and contemporary aspects and thus took shape the festivals of india in 1980 in fact the idea behind altering this entire concept was india wanted to showcase itself not only as a country with a glorious past but also as a country which had adopted the modern values and systems yet in continuity with its traditions the first successful event was held in britain revolving around the theme of continuity and change so in coordination with the idea that mrs indira gandhi had started continuity and change was organized from march to november 1982 the burlington house exhibition was significant precisely because of this historical moment but also because of the number and quality of the objects exhibited which upon their return to india became the nucleus of the collections of the new national museum at new delhi It was natural for British and Indian scholars to look back on this landmark and to hope for another one 33 years later. So the first initiative as I've already discussed earlier in the session began in 1947-48 at Burlington House. So rather than a grandiose plan on paper to be executed through impersonal modalities, the festival has involved informal discussions, the pooling of ideas, interaction among scholars in specific disciplines and among indian and british scholars across disciplines two things were clear from the onset both british and indian scholars and museologists were anxious to get away from the mere chronology of history in their presentation of indian civilization so the concentration and their concern was more with promoting a new understanding of the continuity and change the unity and plurality of indian culture its ability to carry forward the india of the past into the present and the future so the festival was a joint exploration of indian reality and its multifaceted expressions both in terms of its artistic expressions as well as the latest scientific developments that were happening in the country 
So there was a judicious balance between the ancient and the contemporary. So it was really a tough task to balance out or to gel or to showcase the ancient treasures of India and as well as to equally give balance to the new developments that were happening both in the traditional and modern, the scientific and the artistic, the intellectual and the manual. So there were many galleries which I set up in coordination with the theme. So the first gallery which was set up was the image of man. This gallery was set up at the Harvard gallery and it was to be the artistic core of the festival. Stress was on the principles of unity and diversity the interdependence and interconnections of man and nature, the perception of the universe in its juxtaposition of stillness and flux. Numerous sculptures and miniature paintings were finally included in gelling the concept that was displayed. Now the second main exhibit was that of the Indian heritage. It was a logical follow-up to this comprehensive exhibition. The Indian heritage presented at the Victoria and Albert Museum from 21st April to 15th August 1982 was a huge success as many people flocked to see the various displays. This show concentrated on the fact that life at the courts of the Mughal emperors. So the Indian heritage concentrated more on the gifts that were given by the Mughal emperors in terms of architecture, in terms of sculpture, in terms of the fusion of what was in India before the Mughals and what happened when the Mughals arrived in India. Loans from India, Europe and United States were taken for showcasing this event and it complemented the Victoria and Albert Museum's own collection of Mughal architecture, Mughal sculpture that was there. So over 5,000 objects were put on display. Now the next exhibit to show the continuity of the traditions in India, the exhibits of rural India was mounted by Robert Knox at the British Museum from 23rd April to 5th September 1982. It was conceived as an exhibition of pre and proto history, drawing upon the most recent Indian excavations and focusing on the great periods of urbanization in India and the rural cultures of India. Now, one of the most popular amongst all the exhibits was that of the living culture. It was brought to the United Kingdom in terms where India highlighted her rich and varied styles of craftsmanship. These were represented at the festival. The exhibition organized by the Calico Museum Ahmedabad was one of the most revered. So this was organized at the Royal College of Art from 20th October to 17th November. It presented a full range of textiles and ceramics. The Living Arts of India brought to London nine distinguished craftsmen, carefully chosen from all over India, who gave live demonstration of their talent and crafts. Out of all the five main exhibits, Aditi was perhaps one of the most successful because Aditi displayed a celebration of life. It was shown at the new Barbican Centre from 6 July to 1st August 1982. Aditi's unique concept linked the Indian visual and performing arts with traditional craftsmanship and folklore. So there were lots of folk dances which were displayed lots of performances which were displayed and which was appreciated by all the people who witnessed the event. Now, just to show you a few pictures, the first picture is that of a stamp which was released to commemorate the event. The second picture is that of the earliest brochure that was displayed during the event. It was one of the first Festival of India brochure to be released internationally. Media coverage, this is just an example to show you how appreciated the event was in United Kingdom and it got a lot of media coverage from the local press. Now, of course, there were many such brochures that were released. Now, this particular write-up gives you the highlight of the achievements of the event. Now, the highlights and achievements. 
more than a million visitors from UK, Europe and from as far as the USA, Africa and India flocked to the festival. So though the festival was organized in United Kingdom, it added value to United Kingdom because many other international tourists visited United Kingdom to see the displays. Now to showcase India, four majestic mandirs or temples, 16 spots and five towering grates were constructed. These reflected the traditional Indian craftsmanship which was very rarely seen in the West. So it was a great opportunity to see what India was all about. Apart from the displays, 14 different traditional dances in all their splendor was performed regularly on the satellite stages which were created on the ground. So from time to time, the artists used to display their dances or their performances, both the classical form as well as the folk arts. And of course, this got great appreciation from the millions who flocked to see the event. Apart from the displays of this grandeur, seminars were organized and where learned sadhus and scholars were invited to interact. So you had the sadhus from India and the scholars from the world who came and debated, who came and discussed and education got a lot of value in the event. Now the Cradle of Civilization exhibition journeyed through 5,000 years of Indian culture through its vivid medias. 2,000 dedicated volunteers worked round the clock to successfully manage the colossal event. 20 food and shopping stalls treated visitors with Eastern delight. So it was not just the arts, crafts and folk traditions which were displayed, but cuisines of India also got equal platform where people could taste and appreciate the delicacies from India. So all this created an air of unity as many organizations extended their collective cooperation to make the event a success. Thousands of Britons said that their visit had created greater understanding about India's glorious culture and heritage, which obviously changed the perception that they had about India and they got a whole new picture of what India was all about. Many Indians felt proud of their mother culture. Indians who had settled in various European countries who witnessed this event once again felt a sense of pride in their mother culture and it restored their faith in themselves. So it gave them a whole new standing in a foreign ground. Apart from this, many anti-addiction and anti-drug campaigns were also undertaken and this also inspired a great number to give away the bad habit of any such addictions. These are a few pictures. You can see the mandir that was created and the people who had come, the sadhus and all who had interacted during the various seminars. So this is just a picture to show you what the event was all about. Because of the success of the event at United Kingdom, India saw an opportunity to display the same level of event in other parts of the world too. So now we come to the second case study, which is that of the United States of America. Now, if you look at the background of the event, now the plans for the event was cemented when Prime Minister of India, Mrs. Indira Gandhi, the then Prime Minister of India, met with the then President of USA, Mr. Ronald Reagan, in July 1982. The festival was conceived with the joint effort of the Indian government, the government of the United States of America, and identified private sources and institutions who all collaborated to organize the event. More than 1,500 pieces of art was lent by various museums of India that was finally brought to the United States and was displayed in the USA. So on 13th June 1985, the Prime Minister of India, now this was in 1985, now the plan began in 1982, but the Festival of India was organized or it was finally attempted in 1985 and the Prime Minister then of India was Sri Rajiv Gandhi and uh, along with the Vice President of USA, Mr. George Bush, inaugurated the event and the event lasted 
right from 1985 through 1986 it was a 18 month long festival now the core event consisted of paintings and sculptures which were the total number of were eight eight such events under the heading painting and sculpture were organized there were two main textile exhibitions which were decided to be launched one science and technology exhibition was also conceived three forms of contemporary art was displayed there was one craft exhibition one design exhibition and altogether 11 seminars and conferences formed a part of the core event apart from this there was one photography exhibition there was an exhibition on performing arts exhibition on the folk life there was a film festival a poetry festival and the performing arts classical and folk dance and music two streams were taken so altogether the core events constituted of 34 events and around these 34 events 670 events were organized and these events were not just in one particular city in the united states 190 cities were covered in the united states and these 190 cities belong to 44 states of the usa so in fact you can see that the entire usa was celebrating the festival of india so how were these 34 events planned and how were they finally disposed in all these cities was amazing and it required a meticulous planning and the organization was also equally important so let us now look at the planning and organization of the event in the usa the national advisory committees were appointed by the prime minister and this committee consisted of representative of various ministries departments and eminent personalities now the day to day work was carried out by a festival directorate or cell working under the department of culture so department of culture was the nodal agency and the festival of india cell was the one that was looking after the day to day activities so that the event went on smoothly since most museums and art institution in us are private autonomous organizations negotiations and fixing dates had to be done on a one to one basis now this does not happen in most countries where the government looks after the museums so that is a more bilateral agreement between the two governments but in the us the case was different because the private sector was looking after the museums so one to one negotiations was the prime concern but since the festival was well received by the country by us this was done with minimum problems now the emphasis was on creating several associated events around the core set of events so that more and more people got to witness the event and the reachability amongst the americans became very high for an event of this scale a lot of advance publicity had to be done so the advance publicity was given about the festival and the objective of the festival so uh, the atmosphere was created for the festival in the us now for this festival initially because of the scale of the event all efforts were directed at raising funds so the funds collected then was around 13 million rupees which was raised for all the various events to be organized throughout the country so if you look at the diagram my dear students you look at the planning and organization of the festivals in the united states you can see on one side is the Indian National Advisory Committee and on the other side is the US National Advisory Committee now the Indian National Advisory Committee for which the nodal center was the department of culture had a festival of india cell and this became of course responsible for all the activities so what did they do first of all they coordinated with museums and other participating institutions to donate artifacts which were to be carried to us they also conducted publicity in india so that artists could come and submit their forms and could be finally selected and taken to us the production of publicity material was also important 
and of course the general coordination within india was the prime concern now apart from the general coordination in india the nodal agency had to coordinate with the festival coordinator in the us so generally as discussed in the earlier sessions the festival coordinator was the indian consulate which was there in the country now the indian consulate had two roles to play apart from being in regular touch with the us advisory committee they also had to liaison with the indian community and organizations which were there within the united states so all the people who had settled in us had to be contacted and of course one of the important tasks was fundraising coordination with participating museums and other institutions in the us publicity of the festival in us liaison and coordination with local organizations and institutions now if you look at the other side us national advisory committee had its nodal as the american secretariat of the indo us sub commission who also collaborated with the festival coordinator in us to do the same tasks that the festival coordinator in the us was doing so this is how the planning and organization of the festival was done we have seen earlier in the session the various events the core events that were organized so this diagram is essentially explaining how it was all done it shows the structure of the festival of india in the us now if you look at the diagram carefully right at the center you have a heading which shows the core event officially sponsored this included exhibitions performing arts events film festivals seminars symposia conference poetry festivals around the core events we had the associated events now these associated events were sponsored locally that is various associations in us and the various communities in us sponsored these events now these included exhibitions at local museums and galleries performing arts programs involving mostly local artists third special india related event so an indian night or india week was celebrated at the galleries fourth departmental store promotions on india was done food festivals were organized workshops and seminars were conducted lectures were also delivered there were film shows and of course poetry reading and book launches were done now if you look at the outer circle you had the special outreach or educational programs which were done individually by the museums in context of exhibitions second this was an outreach program so that more and more people at smaller cities could also witness the festival now second special features on india was given in print media third special features of india was displayed in the local and national channels on television there were special radio features on india on local radios and of course the distribution of special educational packages of aspects of india to schools and educational institutions were done so right at the primary level even the school children were given a display of what india was all about so here are a few pictures of the festivals of india the latest one as you can see is the 10th annual indo festival which was organized over here in 2019 so let's move to the next part of the session this is again a picture of the festival which was organized in the united states and the festival continued to be celebrated all over the world and continuously it was done in various countries including the united kingdom united states switzerland france many countries of africa were also included where the festival was showcased thailand malaysia china japan so india has been celebrating this kind of festival all over the world ever since the concept of festival of india took birth it has been successfully organized in various countries all over the world and it is been very well received by the local people who have willingly participated and witnessed first hand what india is actually all about so a lot of perception change has been done through these festivals and through these festival india definitely has gained a lot of inbound tourists who actually want to see india close hand or first hand so the final case study is the one that was organized in switzerland and this was organized from september to december 
The festival was held in Bern, the capital city, Zurich, Baden, Basel, Geneva, Freiburg, Lugano, Luzern, Berg, Windisch. So you can see there were many other cities of Switzerland where the festival of India was showcased. The following events were specially displayed during the Festival of India. The Bharatanatyam dance form, the classical dance form of India was displayed from the 6th of September to 10th of September 2018. The Lokarang folk dance that was from the West Zone Cultural Centre Udaipur was organised from the 4th of October to 8th of October 2018. Then October 16 to 20, 2018 saw the showcasing of the Kathak dance forms of India, again a classical dance form. Then the Dhrupad performance was organized from November 7th to 11th, 2018. And the South Indian feature was displayed through the Kathakali dance performance from December 4th to 8th, 2018. Apart from these performing arts which were displayed in different cities of Switzerland, food festivals, film festivals and documentary film festival, digital exhibitions related to Mahatma Gandhi and Swami Vivekananda, exhibitions were organized and very well received in Switzerland. Again, just in the case of the other two countries, here is a display of a few pictures. You can see that this was the logo that was finalized for the Festival of India to be organized in Switzerland. This was the poster, the publicity material which was used to popularize the event. So India has finally been organizing the event quite successfully, though in between 2005 to 2013, there was a stop to the event for various reasons. But since 2013, ever since it was revived, the Festival of India has again gained a lot of popularity world over. So to sum up the session, the Festival of India promotes India's living and composite cultures very successfully and thus changes the perceptions of the people who participate and who witness the various festivals. Ever since the first exhibition of India in 1947-48 in Britain, a lot of progress has been witnessed through the Festival of India series organized every year abroad by the Ministry of Culture and of course the first foundation was laid down in United Kingdom in 1982. The event took a grander scale when it was showcased in US and it showcased India very successfully. Of course, the latest event was organized in Switzerland in 2018. So the entire Festival of India has become a much acclaimed event worldwide. Today, India is recognized for its modern values, yet ingrained with rich culture, tradition and heritage from the ancient times, for which the contribution of the Festival of India series is highly acknowledged. So dear learners, thank you for listening to this session and I'm sure you have learnt a lot about the festivals of India organized abroad and I'm sure it inculcates a sense of pride in all of us. Thank you so much.